The main components of the hero's journey narrative include a hero. This is typically the main character of an action story. The hero most often starts out as a very normal person before embarking on their adventure. The hero should be attractive, which isn't limited to physical appearance alone, as the news just needs to be something special about the hero slash heroine so that the reader would like them and want to be in their shoes despite the danger. Until recently, the adventure genre didn't rely on heroines remaining purely masculine. Typically, the adventure novel hero is a manly and straightforward man who, in addition to physical strength, has intelligence. The latter is crucial as it's the intellect that helps him from middle slash overcome the traps of opponents who don't necessarily have to be. All in all, the heroes of the adventure novels act on the basis of moral principles, have distinct leadership abilities, anticipated, intuitively, and find original solutions that distinguish them from the rest of the cast. At the same time, minor characters usually don't have a deep psychological portrait in many, either good or bad. The villains almost always are negative quests. In this part of the narrative, the protagonist is presented a dilemma they need to solve. The quest ignites the plot by including a series of events that help perform the an unfamiliar slash dangerous environment. The hero's journey will pressure them to leave from their physical comfort zone, which is their everyday surroundings, which are a contemporary stranger and erratically hazardous environment. This unexplored territory will construct conflicts such as character versus supernatural or character versus nature being in. Being in this foreign topography, it will emanate in bigger risk for the hero and amplify the tension within the story. A villain in adventure stories, the protagonist is regularly chased by a bad guy on the outing. These villains such antagonists magnify the stakes for the hero and intensify the tension, the risk. All through an adventure story, a character must face Poral. The quest must compel them to do things that pose their own lives or the lives of others at risk. Suspense is one of the most important elements of an adventure work. It's what keeps readers coming back to this genre again and again. A good adventure author knows how to effectively draw out the plot by dropping hints and withholding some information, a transformation. As the journey progresses, the domain character weathers in an evolution from ordinary person to hero. An antagonist, the role of the antagonist can be played by groups slash physical objects endowed with a personal quality. Exploration. As the protagonist seeks to solve a mystery slash rescue on the character, it's difficult that he or she will explore new environments in the process. This provides the reader with an example that foreign space is pulling them back away to worlds unknown. Fast pace. The fast pace of adventure novels goes right along with the other elements. Without a fast pace, adventure stories would quickly become too much like the genre of drama. Readers who enjoy adventure fiction expect a high level of loveliness throughout as the protagonist leads them on a journey through space and time. A dilemma. A dilemma of some sort presents the thrill of opportunity slash change. This dilemma could be internal and slash external. It could be nature, natural, man-made, ethical, or relational. Whatever the type of dilemma, the protagonist will be forced to respond. It's at this point the key character must make a choice to act and usually becomes either seen as heroic, clever or adept based on their reaction. Now let's talk about the structure of adventure novels. Make your plot active and coherent. The pacing of your story must be brisk. It should be quick and active. So avoid boring readers and losing their interest. Don't be too descriptive. Avoid writing too much exposure and set up as it drags your story. Adventure stories are generally made to entertain and excite the readers. 
Writing too much exposition and unnecessary detail to run the risk of dampening the elements of entertainment and excitement, but not also should be coherent. This means the shorter plots and some conclusions that drive the story along should all be consistent to the overarching plot. If the plot is incoherent, there is a great possibility that the readers will find the action story confusing and pointless to an extent. Create compelling characters. Characters drive the story as a whole and they manifest different types of complex tensions and resolutions. With no characters, there will be no adventure within a story. The protagonists should appear likable and relatable. They should possess great characteristics, however, they should also have some flaws that can amplify the internal conflict. You should t- take time investing in your antagonists that are as significant as the protagonist. Make them likeable and recognizable to some extent. Give them a sense of complexity and authenticity. It's important for the antagonists to have some intriguing characteristics so they can make the adventure story more interesting. Find a setting that, intens- that will intensify the story. This new setting further intensifies the story. This increases the risk for the protagonist and helps in driving the story forward towards the climax. Make the character experience different ty- kinds of challenges while in the story. Include many risks slash twists. The story should be made as intense as possible. It should be complete with risks and twists that can pump the adrenaline of the readers and make their minds bungle. These twists should be unpredictable and surprising to listen, but they should be consistent to the overarching plot. Always consider authenticity in writing. Authenticity means how close the story is to the truth. The storytelling should be realistic within the context of its own work and the words slash actions of the characters should be true to themselves. Both of these things should also be true to life. They should reflect the reality without having to rely on it heavily at the expense of the imagination. This is how adventure fiction can be defined to be. Two words to define adventure fiction is new and dangerous. It's new because the protagonist is taken to a world outside of their own familiar world and dangerous as well since the protagonist's journey is wrapped with constant danger that is primarily utilised to move the plot forward. Another two words to describe adventure fiction would be physical action. Avoid the it was all a dream type of ending at all costs. A part of the adventure genre is the faraway world. There are multiple different methods of portraying and depicting the faraway or foreign world in an adventure novel. These methods lead to a few different types of worlds that are very common in adventure fiction. The first is an new world. The new world is a foreign place. Typically, the protagonist is transferred there via a portal device or in the case of place opera or spaceship. This brand new world is completely unfamiliar to the protagonist and the cast of characters they encounter along the way act as their informants and the writer's informants as well as launching the protagonist to the world. Quite often, this world presents a magic sounds sophisticated enough to be considered magic and other creatures and beings that are very different from the protagonist's norm. The second is a cyborg. Rather than travelling to an unexplored world, the protagonist travels within hidden places of their world, places that were previously unheard of to them. Similar to the new world, the side world is a standing that calls attention to things not seen in everyday life, from magic to peace, speech, science, creatures and animals, and really entire societies different to their own. The third is the lost world. This type of world is quite specific and is frequently modelled up to the side world as both consist in its secrecy alongside our world. As the side is hidden, no one suspects its existence. The lost world is often the dangerous places within the context of the normal world and the protagonist may be actively searching for the world. The fourth is the same world. It can be used in contemporary adventure fiction in two ways. First is perspective and the second is delving deep into places that would be unfamiliar. And the difference in this type of world from the other three is that these are real places with real features. The danger in these stories stem from the need of survival rather than the world or some if its inhabitants out for the protagonist. The other way of portraying the same world through perspective means in the start of the novel, the protagonist is submerged into their birthplace. However, they are seeing it in, in with a different outlook. The contrast between the side world lines and the fact this world has never been 
the hidden words remain hidden from the rest of the normal world. However, in the same world, typing this only demonstrated in a different language, the new world is visible but seen, it can't be unseen. What ties all of these together is the inherent sense of wonder and danger that takes the protagonist like a good angel and a bad devil on their shoulders. The sense of wonder means that parts of the new world are going to be wonderful. The sense of danger has to follow. The protagonist can be unwanted in the world, but the world is safe, fighting nature or from its inhabitants. Now let's discuss the rules of world building in the adventure genre. Essential rules of the world building are first rule of world building and consistency. If a certain type of something is important, the facts need to be remembered as the remainder of the story is written. If later on in the story it would be a confusing plot and a world building hole if the protagonist doesn't seek it out as an option for the second rule of world bending is never try to reveal all the world at once. Reading too much means readers are given info dumps unnecessary to what is happening to the protagonist at the present moment. Third is to avoid stereotypes. Even if a new world is created, beware of creating characters that fit into known stereotypes. Even if the writer is jumping into a new world, it doesn't mean stereotyping can't happen by accident when much stereotyping has occurred in all forms on now let's talk about plotting and adventure novel. Plotting is story. The inciting incident which sets the story in motion and presents the problem followed by plot point one marking the end of act one at the same time and it's the event where the protagonist messes up. Act two is where the trials and the audience happening as a result. At first it appears that the protagonist made the right choice in plot point one only for them to discover in act two that it was the wrong one. Making the decision in plot point 2, marking the end of act 2 means you press it into act 3 where the protagonist sets upon the right decision and solves the conflict and the story. The hero's journey does not offer a different type of structure. It is ended for 5 sections, ordinary world, call to adventure, refusal of the call, meeting with the mentor and crossing the first threshold. The hero is presented in their ordinary world and they receive the call of the this call could be a literal uh, call, a problem needed to be solved by going on what would essentially be a treacherous adventure or the inciting incident. Usually the hero is reluctant to depart the new, normal world and tells down the call due to insecurity believing they have no means of achieving the goal and more. As the hero turns the call that he receives help in the form of a mentor to guide them or new power or artifact that will assist the hero. Hero welcomes a call and crosses the ring into the new world of adventure. The second phase is to test allies and enemies, approaching the innermost cave, the ordeal, and the new reward. In the second phase of the journey, the hero appears in the new world. There they are confronted with all his fights. They encounter characters who become allies, but they also meet the dangers of this old world and its unfriendly inhabitants. The stakes get higher and higher and the hero's life is in danger. To get to the peak, the hero has to progress through a tribulation that will lead them to learning something about both themselves and the world that they are in. This is the reward moment where the hero has achieved their primary goal. The hero stranded in the new world learns of how they can go back. The third phase of the hero journey is the road back to resurrection and the return with the elix in the third phase of the journey the heroes get on the road back home however when things are not as they seem the hero finds a real situation to the issue which is the time of resurrection and then return to the elixir the elixir in this instance could be a physical item but it also represented in the changes in the protagonist as the result of the character arc they have undergone the journey. At the end, the hero can either return to the old world and attempt to pick up the life he had left behind or embrace the new world and remain there. Now let's discuss about the research in the adventure journey. Research. When a person of a certain race starts the skin color, the search to buy a book not strictly their own race, the people results in negative the question, if you're not a person of colour, do you have the right to write certain types of stories and characters? Can the writer manage to tell the story and avoid stereotyping? Often all writers create stereotypes, although they may not intend to. One of the reasons why this occurs in a book, much an exaggerated, dramatised and made more intense than in real life. 
That's because conflict keeps things going and exaggerated characteristics from characters make those characters memorable. Advice right from the heart regardless if someone is insulted when you do your best not to show it up. As for a cultural conversation, if you do plan on writing a novel that you know that you need research, the best thing to do is to conduct research. However, you might put yourself in research months and you're unsure of what's needed in your novel. For this reason, create a vague outline before conducting your research. The outline may also include your basic cast of characters, especially if they belong to a specific race or culture, in which case you to an actual person and purpose. Create your outline and basic cast of characters, the research everything seeming to be important. Before writing, don't keep at the outline again, see if it's in work. Use your knowledge to brainstorm ideas, despite probably doing your research, you'll be inspired with many new ideas, some better. Create a new outline even if you plan on writing by the seat of the pants, no need to stick to the outline previously but ensure you don't diverge too much from it. Now let's get on to creating your adventure with general protagonist. Creating your protagonist. Your protagonist has to be the person who gets to go on an adventure. That means the story is written from their viewpoint and structure the plot around said adventure. The story can't be told from the companion of someone on an adventure and this one is reserved for the sidekick. The protagonist makes the decision to go somewhere, which is why they can't be a sidekick in the story. Unless, as the story progresses, the protagonist rises from a position where in he or she was a sidekick, and that rise needs to happen at the beginning of the novel. The protagonist also needs two more things: wants and needs. The protagonist wants its object when you presented them with the problem, of the obvious one is the solution of the problem that drives them to act throughout the story. What the protagonist needs, however, is a sort of thing, something unique within the protagonist as a person, a certain kind of need they never openly admitted to themselves. That need also is something that drives the protagonist to act even if they don't realize it themselves. The adventure genre welcomes an ensemble of protagonists. An adventure novel will such can have multiple protagonists, all with unique roles slash journeys within the adventure story. Um, each one of them has a unique trait that helps move the overall plot along and they will have inner journeys and issues that they will have to work through in their own individual character arcs. Additionally, an ensemble of protagonists might work in a different way as well as where the story, the author parts of the story from the viewpoint of the protagonist and then continues the story often in the sequel from the viewpoint in the last story. Your core cast of characters in your adventure novel should receive almost the same treatment as the protagonist in terms of development. Nothing wins a story more than a one-dimensional protagonist. It often occurs in stories where the protagonist is the simple leader, always deciding what to do, but in actuality lacks much intelligence. The protagonist serves only to responsibly rush forward, endanger everyone, save them from the same danger, and keep the story moving. Now on creating your cast of characters, creating a cast of characters, the core cast of characters, protagonists and major characters should be introduced at the beginning of the novel. They need to have depth more than one dimensional stereotypes and have their own voices. Exaggeration makes characters memorable but the same effect can be reached by making characters appear. We treat them as real people and they're not just devices for the plot. They have hopes and dreams. A character's arc means to give your characters an aspect of themselves they will change. It's not a redemption tale where people with negative traits welcome them and become a better person. It's first to an inner journey that makes the person shift a perspective on what in life, both within the adventure world and out to. Many say great relatable characters. Others say I want to read about anti-heroes and villains as goody two shoes on Instagram. Many will even add when a villain changes to good, they're less interesting as characters, treat all characters as real people, give them story, history, backstories, opinions, allies, some even contradictory to each other and reactions. Have them change throughout the story to get their voices right, listening to the talk of real people as a daily exercise, not how they all speak in the same yet different manner. This must be applied with the antagonist slash villain regardless of whether they are the same character or not. 
an antagonist is someone who is constantly opposing the protagonist but they don't necessarily need to play the villain. A villain is a representation of pure evil. A good villain will serve as an antagonist to the hero while a one-dimensional villain is just a mere person the hero must defeat to get the reward and either stay in the new world or return to death. Now to writing the novel, you will not be able to write that big of a number of words per day. Some advice, the best thing to do while writing a novel is to build up a routine. Write at least how many words you choose per day or every day for how many hours you decide. Some will advise to write even if it's hard and you're so suffering from writing a lot. They say write anything until something of value comes out. Some days you might write thousands of words out of which not much makes into the final version of the novel. Some days you'll be um, stuck, unable to get words out from lack of inspiration, writing every day for how long it may be, and you needing to write or not write whatever comes to mind just to keep writing. Others say you make a mistake when outlining your novel as it may be boring for you to write it. Others say you make a mistake not outlining your novel because you'll be lost. Write your novel in a way that suits you. Inspiration comes and goes. Some days you have to chase it, but you don't have to chase it by writing anything down. You can chase it by brainstorming. If you're facing writer's block, ask yourself why you're not excited, slash demotivated to write what's to come next. Something that you need to change that. Another fact also remains the longer you're away from writing, the further away you'll get from the writing. Writing a novel takes diligence, patience, and determination. Take care of yourself in the process as well. Take breaks when it's needed and ensure they aren't too long. Because if they are, you lose much drive and might not finish the first draft. Now let's focus on determining the right pace. Pacing is important in any given novel. A word too fast paced without any breaks can be hard to read. On the other hand, a slow paced novel without any fast paced action can be dull and boring. A slow pace has no place in adventure. Adventure implies action, danger, and excitement. Tire your readers or bore them to sleep. A certain balance needs to be reached. Adventure novels begin in the ordinary world for the protagonist. At the start, the pace should be slow, but that has to change quite quick. Eventually, the protagonist is presented with the call of adventure. The action commences until the protagonist crosses the first threshold into the new world. Here the pace can slow down as the protagonist crosses it all, but danger comes soon after bringing action back into play. A balance between a fast pace and slow pace offers the chance to keep readers immersed. Backstories and flashbacks slow the pace, so balance out these moments with action routine. Now let's concentrate the climax and dash any common errors. The climax is the moment where all action, the action comes to a point. The hero defeats the villain, grabs the helix, and is ready to go back home. This is followed with the ending where the hero decides to stay or leave and when everything can be wrapped up easily. But the first is defeating the villain too uh, easily. Second, the villain gets defeated too early. If a villain is defeated around the 85 to 90 percent mark, you've done a good job. However, if they're defeated early in that too much time to take it up with the wrap up of the novel, third is the villain is defeated too. After the climax, then you jump immediately to the epilogue in a series of flashbacks or even as time jump epilogue is created where the hero is back in their own home. Why is this wrong? Because you skip up or wrapping things up and readers are denied access to what this protagonist is to stay or leave. Now about editing the manuscript, pay attention to world building. Is the extraordinary world strange, beautiful and a location where you'd like to go to live? Characters, do they have a unique voice? If you're writing in first person voice, does the voice fit the protagonist? Plot, does the plot flow seamlessly? Are all the events in your novel connected with the chain of cause slash effect? Or does some scenes appear to come out of nowhere? Pace, are there some are the sections of your novel that are too fast or too slow? Is the juxtaposition between fast pace and slow production scenes balanced out?
nice bags. Do they come in the right moment if you have them? Are you divulging the characters' backstories at the right time? Read the first draft with these questions in mind. Give honest answers to these questions and prepare yourself for an extensive editing process. After you finish fixing story, character and word errors, proceed to step on proofreading and editing, looking for grammar, syntax and spelling things. Paragraphs too lengthy need to be shortened and the same applies to long sentences. The scripture passages need to be examined closely to check the flow and accuracy. If descriptions are lengthy, shorten them. If descriptions are too short, expand upon them without going overboard. Now to fixing story errors. Story errors are errors that most often are called but holes by review. When you're reading a novel and something makes no sense, there is a plot hole somewhere. Try to fix it. The first thing you to do is see what you can change without changing the whole story. Change the protagonist's final got to match the story better. This can result to rewriting many sections because you will need to make sure the cause and effect change is consistent throughout the story. The second thing to do is to give into an extensive rewrite. Don't give in to it unless there are too many errors needed to be fixed, like world building errors and character existences. This might result in a draft that is rather different from the first draft and change the story so much that it hardly resembles your original idea. Because of that, when you do give in to it extensively, but be careful not to not create new errors in your manuscript regarding the characters and the world. Now to fixing. Now to fixing characters and world building errors. World building errors can really impact the plot. It's most often it's believed that the story happens in a specific world with its own rules. It's believed that the world produces your story in an original way. The truth is a bit different, however. The world needs to serve the story you're trying to tell, or the world needs to serve the plot, not opposite for that reason. You need to analyze the world, its wonders and limitations. The world needs to have wonders and dangers. Wonders produce the tools and other possible magical tools for the characters to use. It also needs to have certain types of limitations and explanations. For this reason, you need to edit your novel with the world building in mind after you've edited the story in itself. Since the world is the same story, it comes in second to review and edit. During this process, you will need to analyse and possibly remove many aspects of the world that don't fit in the story, especially if the presence of these aspects or wonders do not actively impact the story in any way. Another thing to analyse when it comes to world building is whether you have a lot of information dumps in the novel where one character explains the world to another character in what seems to be an endless moment. To fix this, think of a world at the tip of an iceberg. The iceberg is there and most is underwater. Your readers only need to know a bit to understand what's happening and why. They don't need history lessons of how the world and its society came to be. Character inconsistency or not, character of primarily that seem unusual in a specific scene. A kind of inconsistency happens when a character acts decidedly out of character without a prior cause for that. Another error that might happen regarding the character's is voice. Additionally, if you're writing a first-person point of view, then you need to visualise that it's the protagonist in the narration, their specific voice. If you come across a passage that reads like it's written by a narration, you work it to make it sound like the protagonist. Simply, a third-person limited point of view also needs to sound like the protagonist. However, as a third-person point of view implies a detached narrator, you can get away with messages that are wordy and unlike the protagonist's voice. The important question is well, if prior to consistencies are fixed before the plot is finished tightening and makes sense, you might need to make more changes in the character later. As such, it's wiser to leave the character to the final edit before proofreading and fixing grammar such as syntax errors. Although it's lost when you're editing for character consistency and what you need to do is read your draft thoroughly and carefully, analyze each character and each sense, and determine whether the design and act correct. 
Now let's talk about the importance of a good cover. A good cover is essential in attracting readers, but you also need to connect to the content of the novel. The cover has to attract the readers to go on the adventure with the characters. It needs to connect to the context of your novel and offer more insight into what the novel is about. You shouldn't mislead your readers. Make sure the cover looks professional. There are many tools you can use if self publishing to create a pub, pub, professional looking cover, but you might still fall short if you lack the needed skills. Now let's talk about publishing an adventure novel. Publishing a novel traditionally is harder than self-publishing. You need to get an agent to sign you on because many publishing houses only accept manuscript via agents. If you don't have an agent, you need to look for publishers that accept unsolicited manuscripts and publish in your genre, in this case, adventure fiction. If you miss that window, you'll have to wait for the next time they do so, which can be months slash even a year. If you have an agent, the agent takes on this one. Make sure you signed on by an agent that has had previous uh, experience on publishing adventure fiction. This means that you need to know which publishers to send your manuscript to, as well as how to get the right price. Self publishing means you'll be your own publisher. You'll take care of the formatting of the novel, cover, and marketing your novel will require before the publish date. There are many tools you can utilize depending on the platform where you self publish your novel. Amazon, Kindle, Unlimited, and more. It takes time and effort to self publish, and it will take, takes money, especially if you want to make printed copies. What you really need about self publishing is the sound platform, most often via social media. If you don't read reviews, what you can do is find books reviewers who focus on adventure fiction and ask them if you would be interested in getting a free copy of the novel for an honest. You can run contests where your potential readers can receive free copies and you can pay to promote your book on Amazon Goodreads and other social media platforms. Regardless of the path you choose, publishing a novel can take a lot of time. It will take time until you find the right and sign. It will take you time to perfect the novel before publication. It will take time before the publisher sign you and it will take time for you to build a platform online unless you have one prior to reading such a reading the novel. Adventure fiction takes the protagonists and readers on a journey that is both fun and terrifying. There are no demands in adventure fiction beyond having the protagonist embark on a physical and emotional journey. Whether that journey is in a new world or within the shadows of the current world, depends on only on you and the story you want to tell. Start with your ideas and characters, develop the ideas and world, write the first draft. Editing until it's the perfect version of itself. In adventure fiction, you can use elements of other genres to create the story. Last but not least, we'll go on about characters in adventure fiction. The cultural pace of adventure means makes varied characterization more difficult to achieve than in other types of fiction. In fact, some read writers barely even, even seem to try. Breaks devoted to characterization may spoil an adventure story from forward. If adventure fiction writers want to find a way to explore the protagonist's hidden steps, easy to pace must slow in certain places that catalyzation must be presented on the fly. This is no mean feat. In the rush to keep the action going, characters specialize in what are seen as adventure stories, forget to confront the characters with enough emo- objects, emotions, situations, or give the characters space enough to react to both individual and within the limits of psychological realism. A character needs to be involved in a wider variety of situations to really emerge as an individual. There are three types of actions. The purposeful, habitual and gratuitous. A credible character who performs several instances of each type of action will probably seem more real. The lessons are usually all purpose while human humans remain either exclusively happy to us or gratuitous. Aside from the sexism of male and horses is that when a character only performs one type of action, it limits their power to something less than what is really human. Often you end up with the stereotype of one other slash another or an innocence of character who serves as nothing more than a function in a story. If however a character performs a full range of purpose, habitual and gratuitous actions, then they become an individual rather than a child. 
secondary character with a walk on role is still legitimate, they may be necessary for fulfilling a, a function. However, if the character is meant to generally sustain reader sympathy slash interest, if the reader is meant to believe in the character as a fully individual human being, the character must be able to perform purposeful, habitual, and gratuitous actions. Adventure genre itself has no problem with purposeful slash gratuitous actions. Gratuitous adventures are embarked upon for a simple reason to see what's out there. Purposeful adventures are often missions. Habitual actions seem contribute towards adventure. Mixing purposeful and gratuitous actions can know an adventure story if the story leans too heavily towards one type of action. After all, readers pick up adventure novels to escape from their daily world and the genre itself is synonymous with the idea of risk, anything that interrupts the regular habitual routine. Habits define your daily lives and are such a crucial part of who we are as human beings. This places characters in adventure fiction at risk of seeming inwardly as people and as individuals. Cattle quirks may be the modest solution, truly meaningful, habitual actions can be difficult to illustrate without breaking the story's momentum. Many adventure writers skip these boring everyday details, private details, in order to get the action. However, they might be missing out on important opportunities for characterization. Adding details of the characters' habits during such moments may be the key to fleshing out their individuality. Adventure often involves characters attempting to secure the basic needs for survival. Think about food, sleep and more society. Chances are that your right or character has a unique way of acquiring their basic needs. All three types of action, the purpose for habitual and gratuitous, can be used to flesh out the characters in adventure fiction, even if habitual actions are underutilized in the genre. You can individualize the nuance of your adventure story protagonist without sacrificing suspense and momentum. Thinking about how your hero, hero slash heroine would react to reports, certain situations that all human beings have experienced before can help you understand what makes your adventure protagonist a distinguished individual.